Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm back here at Infinity of Flemington here in Flemington, New Jersey. Take a look at this brand new 2023 Infinity Q50 sensory all-wheel drive in grand blue. Beautiful color on this car. This is the last trim level that we're going to review for the Q50 this model year and of course this being the last model year for the Q50. This could be the last time we take a look at one of these brand new Q50s unless they do some type of special edition for the last couple of thousand off the assembly line. Hopefully they'll do something like that. But what we want to do with this review today is say, hey, look, we got three trims for the Q50, Lux, Sensory, and Red Sport 400. If you don't want to have that high performance Q50 with the 400 horsepower in the Nissan Z engine for over 60 grand in the Red Sport 400, maybe taking a look at this Sensory all-wheel drive, maybe that's the trim for you. So we're going to check this out, see what it brings to the table in this sports sedan segment. So let's dig in. All right, the front end of this Infinity Q50 Sensory. The color is grand blue, beautiful color on this car. Then we have that gloss black grille in the middle with the Infinity badge, functionality top and bottom, LED headlights, LED daytime running lamps, LED turn signals, LED fog lamps. And then we have that ni this nice gloss black, almost like a front splitter that runs along either side. So very, very nice looking front end here on this Q50 Sensory. All right, wheel and tire set up on this Q50 Sensory all-wheel drive. We have a 19-inch wheel, aluminum alloy, gunmetal gray with silver accents, nice looking wheel. We double spoke. We have the Infinity badge on the center cap, standard brake and rotor package, and these 19-inch wheels are wrapped in Dunlop all-season tires, 245 on the width, a 40 series sidewall, 19s, all four corners, all-wheel drive. Full side profile on this Q50 Sensory in grand blue. Great color on this car, I think. I love this dark blue color. Love the hard body line that comes across the top of the door handles and then picks up on a second bod hard body line, almost does a Z right here, and then comes back through into the rear tailgate. Really gives it a good sense of style. This vehicle hasn't been redesigned in a long time, but you know what? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And that's how I feel about the design on this car. Let me know what you guys think. Moving in on closer, we are gloss black on the side view mirror with LED turn signals. We have color matched with some chrome trim on the doors, front and back, fuel filler cap on the right side of the vehicle. Up top, we have a color match roof with shark fin antenna and a standard style sunroof. All right, the back end of this Q50, we have that nice kick up on the trunk lid, infinity badge in the middle, Q50 on the right, all wheel drive down on the bottom left of the trunk area all color matched all the way down in this grand blue till you get to your gloss black rear diffuser and functional dual exhaust with all LED lighting in the back. So since we got the functional dual exhaust, let's hear what this baby sounds like. All right, we're under the hood of this 2023 Q50 Sensory. And what do we have for power plant? While you're looking at it, we got a really nice engine cover too. We have a three liter twin turbo V6, made it to a seven speed automatic transmission, 300 horsepower, 295 pound feet of torque, MPGs, 19 in the city, 27 on the highway, 22 combined, the engine's minimum octane rating is 91, so you'll need to use premium unleaded fuel. All right, before we get into the interior of this Q50 Sensory all-wheel drive, you're going to want to know, Mike, how much does this gorgeous blue Q50 cost? Well, MSRP for the Q50 Sensory all-wheel drive trim, before options, is 50350 
Now, we have a few options on here, so we have to add in $675 for the Infinity Radiant Exterior Welcome Lighting with Logo. An extra $485 for the Infinity Radiant Grill Emblem. An extra another $485 for Infinity's Radiant Illuminated Kick Plates. An extra $225 for the Splash Guards. An extra $195 for the rear USB charging ports. And another $695 for this Grand Blue Premium Paint. Add in destination and delivery of $1,075. And your total MSRP for this Q50 Sensory All-Wheel Drive is $54,185. Let's check out the interior. Starting with the footbox, nice large dead pedal brake and accelerator. You have the old-fashioned emergency brake push on off right there. Full carpeted floor mats in the trunk area. And here is our illuminated infinity door sill plate to welcome you to the car, which is nice. Seating. We have power seats with lumbar for the driver and the front passenger and then we have this nice black leather interior with the white stitching nice bolstering nice soft headrest really nice looking graphite interior door panel action really nice we got soft touch up top we have this black open pour wood finish around that chrome door handle flat black on the switch gear we have the upgraded bose performance series sound system in here I love that leather insert, gives it some more design and again, a different feel. And then we have nice soft door armrest with the stitching, good looking. And I like the difference in textures and the quality of the materials. We look at the dash, soft touch with the stitching and a nice large glove box. All right, infotainment system time. We have the old style Infinity dual screen in touch infotainment system. Top screen right here, going to give you the maps, going to give you a touch screen action. Once you wake it up, looking good. It's going to give you the backup camera as we hit reverse with 360 degree view and trajectory. Could be a little bit clearer, but this is the older system. But I like the fact that it takes up the whole screen. So nice job there. And you can also change your views of the camera as well. If you would like by hitting the change view button, now you can look at some other stuff. So it is a nice, easy system to use as we have cameras all over the vehicle. The lower screen, we have our audio, our general menu, where you can go through different action, wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. You can go to your connections and you can connect up to six different devices. So that's kind of neat. So they got you covered there. And then you can go to your climate and that's where you can adjust your dual climate control, your steering, heated steering wheel, and then you have your heated seats for the driver and the front passenger. And they can be auto hooked up with your uh, climate system. So if it's the winter time and you have your climate system set at like 70 and it's only 35 degrees out, you hit auto. So when you start the car, the, the heat will come on and the heated seat will come on but we do not have ventilated seats. Would have been a nice touch, I think, for ventilated seats in the sensory. And then on either side, you have hard controls for your temperature adjustment, as well as your uh, defrost settings and that kind of thing. And then you have your audio where you can go to your music and go through your music or your Sirius XM channels or any of that other stuff. Or you can Bluetooth your phone and get that action going. So it's nice and easy to use. It is a touch screen, but it is the old dual panel style. Um, in, the, in the newer version, you have the large nine inch system and it's gonna replace this. But I do like the fact that it is integrated in there with your two heat and air vents and you have that nice open pour wood on either side too, to kind of lift it up. So that's a nice touch. As we come down further, we also have some hard controls so you don't have to use the touch screen if you don't want to. And here's our heated seats right here. Down below underneath that, we can open this up. You get an area for storage and a 12 volt. And then here is the gear shift that's gonna take you through the seven speed automatic transmission. Here is the dial. 
if you want to use the dial to go through your infotainment system rather than the touch screen, they got you covered that way with more redundancies. And then here's your drive modes, which we'll take a look at when we go through the dash. Two cup holders, more of that open black open pour wood, which really looks nice. And then our infinity key fob. Here it is. Infinity badge on top. Very much the same as a Nissan key fob. Remote start, lock, unlock, pop the trunk, panic button. Nice weight. And then we have our center armrest, leather, stitching, open it up. And we have another 12 volt USB-C, USB-A. All right, drive mode action. The drive modes don't show up on your dash over here. They show up on the top portion of the infotainment screen where your maps are. So you hit the button and you have your personal setting, sport, standard, eco, and snow. So they got you covered with several different and the color changes for everyone. So that is a nice feature. I like that. Infinity steering wheel, nice leather wrap steering wheel, nice 10 and 2 notches, nice white stitching, infinity badge on the horn button. I love this chrome brushed aluminum look on the wheel to lift it up a bit. Round wheel, not a flat bottom, but you know what? That's not a problem because I have this everything set for my driving position and I have no problem getting my knees out at 5 foot 11 from underneath the wheel and getting out of the car. So that's a nice touch. Plus they also have that uh, safe exit, which I'll show you where the seat moves back out of the way when you turn the car off to get out. So that's a nice touch. I'll show you that when we get done with the steering wheel and the dash. So on the switch gear, we have our telephone voice commands on the left. And then we have some action to control the digital portion of your dash. And then on the right side here, we have our cruise control and safety suite controls, full safety suite in here, blind spot monitoring, cross traffic alert, lane keep assist, all that jazz in here. And then on the stalks, here we go with our headlights and fog lamp controls. And then on the right side, you have your windshield wiper controls. Down below, traction, traction control off, pop the trunk, up top, bright and dim the dash, and your trip reset. And here's the button right here for the electronic tilting and telescoping steering wheel. Now, of course, the system is giving me warnings because I am low on go go juice in this car. Not surprising. So we'll get out of that. Analog digital combo, analog gauges for your speedometer, tachometer, fuel level, and coolant temperature. And then we have a small four inch display in the center that's going to give you additional information. And each menu that I'm going through has some menus as well. So it is a nice, easy system to use, and it gives you all the information right at your fingertips that you may need while you're on a drive. So I do like that. As we move over to our driver door panel, more of that nice wood, two memory seat settings, and then with these buttons right here, we got the power fold mirror action going. So they got you covered there. In and out, set it in the middle, they'll leave it there. And when you lock the car, they'll fold in. So that's a nice touch. All right, overhead console time, LED dome lighting. If you want the dome lighting to come on off and open and close the door, this button is to remain off. And then when you open the door, lights will come on, close the door, lights will dim out. We do have an area for your sun, uh, shades, which is nice. And here we go with the sunroof, manual shade. Just push that back with your hands, one click. And open it goes nice and quickly too. And then one click back, nice and easy. And it does have a tilt function. And then just close up the shade. Oh, sun visor with vanity and lighting. And does it slide? Yes, it does. All right, so we're outside of the car, and I do want to show you this safe exit, easy exit, whatever you would like to call it where the seat will move back when you um, turn the car off. Now I have the seat set for my driving position. So if I reach in to the stop start button right there and turn it off, that will seat will move back a couple inches for me to get out. However, the, the uh, steering wheel doesn't move up and out of the way. And since it's a power tilting and telescoping wheel, would have been nice to have that move up and out of the way, but they got you covered with that easy exit. And that way you don't have to worry about hitting your knees here. All right, getting in the back seat of this Q50, the seat is set for my driving position. But before I do that, look how wide 
this door opens up almost 90 degrees. This makes it very easy to get into the back of this Q50. So we'll hop on in. No problem getting in. Plenty of room at 5 foot 11 for my knees, for my head, for my shoulders. More leather, but plastic down the back, and then a seat pocket. Don't like that in an infinity. And then we have the same thing with the seat pocket behind the front passenger. In the back here, we do have two heat and air vents, a USB-C and a USB-A. So plenty of USB connectivity in this Q15. Good job there. Rear door panel, same as the front. You have that nice, soft touch, open pore wood with the stitching, the leather design in the insert. Here's your front door panel looking good. Here's the back door panel looking good. So I love that consistency of design and the continuation of the vibe here in the back seat. Back seats, leather, stitching, comfortable, very nice. Graphite is the color on this interior. And then, whew, armrest got a little stuck. There's the armrest, nice and soft. Two cup holders. And then we got to pass through to the trunk from here. So that's a nice touch in case you have some skis or something you need to fit in here. But overall, nice and comfortable here in the back of this Q50 sensory. All right, we got some trunk action here on this Q50 sensory. Pop it from the dash, pop it from your key fob, or come to the back right underneath infinity, pop it, and it lifted up. No electric assist, but it lifts up nice and easily. Here are the carpeted floor mats in this Q50 sensory. Looks nice, but it would have been nice to have something like Infinity on here or Q50 on here. Let me know what you think. But plenty of room here in this trunk. So a good amount of trunk space here in the back of this Q50. And then underneath here, we have an area for your tools and whatnot, but I don't see a spare. And then if you need to take the rear seats down, they will fold down using these straps. Just have to pull the strap on either side and then come around to the back and just pull the seats down. Nice and easy. We come around to the other side of the car. Pull the seat down. So now, even though it's narrower and there's a kick up, you have room for those extra large items if you don't have anybody in the back seats. And if you don't eat them down, you still have that pass through uh, to put through some stuff if it's narrower. So they got you covered with plenty of room here in the back of this Q50. All right, here's our window sticker for this 2023 Infinity Q50 sensory all wheel drive. So we'll zoom on in, give you the action on your standard and optional equipment. And your total MSRP, mileage estimates, fuel costs from the government, grand blue with graphite, got here on a truck from Elizabeth. Let's take her out for a spin. All right, so we are driving this 2023 Infinity Q50 Sensory all-wheel drive action in this vehicle and before we get to the driving dynamics plenty of visibility at the windshield side glass rear view mirror no problem we got the safety suite in here blind spot monitoring cross traffic alert all that jazz is in this q50 we got the 300 horsepower engine and so we're ready for a little fun on the back roads and we'll see how this does now this is the third q50 we've driven on the channel we've driven the lux we've driven the red sport 400 and now the sensory trim the middle of the road trim for the q50 so we'll come down here and do an emergency stop get that out of the way in three two one Nice and linear, no problem. And now we take off. Nice shifting out of this automatic transmission. No issues there. And down the road we go. Uh, 
obviously this is a really bumpy back road so we're getting jostled around a little bit but other than that this isn't bad at all steering is nice responsive car stable on the road very confident drive for sure coming into the sharp left car is very stable and now we take off Stop, see so yeah, how we take off zero to 60 in three, two, one. Nice push back in the seat. Really well done. Well done. Even without that Red Sport 400 horsepower engine, this car gets up and moves. into a turn to the left on the brakes nicely done this car stays nice and planted on the road not a lot of body roll going on Suspension's a bit firm, but that's to be expected. This is a sports sedan with a luxury touch feel to it, which I really like because it gives you a little bit of both worlds. It gives you that nice luxury feel with these nice, comfortable seats. And uh, then it delivers some nice sports sedan performance with this driveline and the nice suspension which is a bit firm so if you like a softer ride maybe this car isn't for you because it does give you that nice firm ride that really quick handling suspensions well damped so a really really good option here in this sports sedan segment now you're all going to yell at me mike this q50 is old and the design is dated Q50 in this format has been around for a long, long time without a redesign, but this is it for the Q50, right? Infinity has said after the 2023 model year, the Q50 in this form will no longer exist. So this is the time if you want one to get one, and there was no point in doing a redesign if they're ending this model in its current form after this year. But then you say to yourself, look, if it ain't broke, don't fix it and this ain't broke this handles well it drives well it's got nice interior appointments right i have my nav i have my uh comfort uh creature comforts heated seats ventilated seats uh excuse me heated seats heated steering wheel uh as well as dual climate control action i have usb connectivity in this vehicle with a C and A's so they got you covered on both either an older phone or a newer phone I got my sunroof so I can enjoy the nice light coming in while I'm driving down the road or having fun on my favorite twisty road over the weekend so there's a really good stuff in here now the question becomes do you want to spend fifty four thousand dollars on a Q50 sensory to get this experience or am I going to go less money, go Q50 Lux, or do I want the ultimate Q50 and go Red Sport 400? Because in that vehicle, and we've seen that one, and I'll put that review at the end of this one if you want to check out the 400 horsepower version of the Q50. The Red Sport 400 has the Nissan Z engine in it. And so it is unbelievable as far as the power, handling, and fun 
with the effort Nissan has, or excuse me, Infiniti has put in to the Q50 Red Sport. But if you don't need all that extra horsepower, the 300 is plenty. This thing is going to get up, move down the road, and give you a lot of driving pleasure for the money. So you guys let me know what you would do. Is the Infiniti Q50 a sport sedan you would consider buying here in 2023 knowing it's going away and if you don't get one now you're never going to get one? Or are you going to take your hard-earned money and go elsewhere with your sports sedan business? So let me know in the comments what you have to say. But I want to thank Infinity of Flemington here in Flemington, New Jersey for allowing the channel access to this vehicle for a review this morning. I'd like to thank all of you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like. Please also consider subscribing and turn on that notification bell so you'll never miss another Shabby's Rides video. And I'll see all of you on the rebound. Take care, everyone.